What if you knew a healthcare professional is the reason why my daughter hasn't undergone FGM and also ensured I was supported as a survivor? In Britain, we have to call out British people. I'm British. We don't like to speak about certain things, especially if it's about sex, religion, and race. And if you're going to talk about FGM, you have to have those three conversations. So nearly 19 years ago, I was pregnant with my daughter. And when she was born, three months old, a nurse asked me what my pregnancy was like. So she went back to her, uh, my notes and she said, Ms. Hussein, can I check? Um, she goes, I understand you're from Somalia. And I know in Somalia, they practice something called femogenital mutilation. Can I check if you've been through this? So quickly, and I remember this, I did not feel judged by her. She was checking with me because she stepped in when a lot of people missed me. She was the first person to say to me what I experienced was abuse. I never heard it in that context before. I mean, sometimes I actually imagine, oh my God, what would have happened if I never met Jennifer? What I had done, I might have done type 1 to my daughter because I, I didn't think type 1 was terrible. But not thinking about pinning her down, holding her, touching her genitalia was a violation. That is something I learned. So don't other girls deserve this? Don't other mothers like me or other, another woman who comes from a family where this is practice? Doesn't she deserve that same information? And the only people that can give that kind of information is your health professional. In the UK, we have, services are growing, have been growing over the years, but it's still not enough. And, and, and unfortunately, a lot of the services are based in London. But what about all the other women who don't live in London? But also training our health professionals appropriately and better and well equipped to deal with this, then we might not need so many services. Either, do you see what I mean? I wish my GP asked me that question. I wish my midwife, because they, they just didn't have the right training. No one told her, why are you so worried about this? What views are you holding to be worried about asking me? I think what people need to understand, especially if you're a British black brown woman who's an FGM survivor, the system here is racist, full, full stop. So because of that, the health system now is not giving you what you need. So the fact that we don't have access to services, it's how I'm not treated equally to everybody else in this health system. And the reason FGM is really critical, FGM is affected by the most vulnerable human being globally, which is the black female girl child who's African. Like literally, she is the most vulnerable human being in the world. She's the one who's left behind, the last human being that we think of. And FGM majority affects that girl. So the world doesn't, those who, have, who hold resources never think of her. She's never in their radar. FGM, it's fundamentally there because we live in a world where it's still okay to control the female body and sexuality. And that's why I'm always saying we, the system has to change. It's not, it's, not, it's not just doing a workshop around FGM. FGM happens. We have a system that says abusing women, controlling women, controlling their sexuality is acceptable, it's okay and it's promoted until we address it as that, it's not going to go anywhere, I promise you.